everybody. God bless you. Um, we're live now on Facebook, and we have lovely uh, Sharon Katecha, who's going to open up with some worship. And um, I'm thrilled to have Ephraim with his saxophone, and he's going to sign us out at the end, I believe. Is it at the end you're coming on, or is it after Sharon? <laughs> I'm going to sing uh, Cornerstone.
praising God and worshiping the Lord, especially in these these times we live in. There's so much unrighteousness going on. It's just, you can tell it's just heaping up, you know, to the point where God's going to do something, something grand on a massive scale. Anyway, welcome aboard. I'd like to greet everybody. We're all, all of our mics are, are off, are muted. So we'll get straight into the message. And then at the end, Ephraim, I believe, is going to play, play us out with his saxophone. So let's just pray. And I also want to pray for Ephraim because he'll be um, in London, I think, on Monday, playing his saxophone outside the Nigerian embassy. And um, along with all the other protesters, many Christians, I believe, Nigerians will be there to pray for their country. Again, it's just shocking what you, you hear, uh, how nations are being, how they're treating their people, <laughs> the people are rising up everywhere. It's something else. So let's just pray now. Uh, we'll open up the meeting in prayer, and then let's just pray a, a little for, for the Nigerians. Heavenly Father, we do thank you today for your mercy, your grace, and we just enter boldly into this throne room of grace where we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Father, I just thank you for everyone who's listening and watching on our church Sunday morning church service at Victory Church on Zoom. I just thank you, Lord, that the ears will be anointed, the eyes will be anointed to see, and we'll know the truth. The truth will make us free. And we can be a, a blessing in our area where we live, where we can express the Christ and the life of Jesus and the, the grace of God and the mercies that are ours in him. Lord, we are, we'll lift up Ephraim as he goes with his saxophone on Monday along with all the other protesters protesting the violence that's taking place in their nation, Nigeria. Lord, we add our prayers to their prayers that your mercy will be upon that nation and that you will, Lord, bring about a good result out of a bad one. Out of the negative, Lord, turn it into a positive. That's what you do. And we just thank you, Lord, for the peace of Nigeria. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you, and I uh, appreciate all of you being here with me today, where we can come together in praise and worship, in prayer, and in in the unity of the faith. It's the, um, the unity that is very important for us to know will come about by God himself. It's the union life, the, 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 us and him in one mind, walking with God in one faith. And God's going to bring about this awesome atonement at one mint, one with him, not by men trying to do it through their fleshly means, but by God doing it by the Spirit. And union life is what really is the end game, to be in union with God, with his son Jesus. Our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. And so the vision, we have to keep that vision very high. You know, Habakkuk 2.2, 2, write the vision. Those that run will be able to read it. And this, this vision is for the end times. And he said, wait for it, wait for it. It will come to pass. It will come about. And so this vision, I believe, is about the union that we will have with the Father and the Son, and we will have a one mind, we'll be in agreement. Uh, you can't walk with God if you're not in agreement with God as to his ways and what he has in mind. And if you have in mind what he has in mind, then you're in agreement, you're at one with. That's your atonement, it's, 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 it's done. It's finished now. And we're moving towards that. We're moving towards the, the end game. 
And uh, I'm sure we would all agree as Christians that we are at the end of the ages. Uh, it's, uh, it's the end game. <laughs> it's kind of, the day of the Lord could come at any time. But I want to touch again on the area of the feasts because the feasts of of the three feasts are very pertinent to where we stand today and where we were yesterday and, and the day before that. The three feasts we know as Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. And these feasts typify for us dispensations that, 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 that we're in or going into or leaving every year these three feasts in the old days old covenant uh, god commanded the people to come together three times a year and they would bring their offerings they would bring offerings for god to sacrifice to the lord that was under the law today of course we we take these types and we can interpret them uh, in a dispensation that we're in or leaving but it's not so much now as bringing god uh, offerings we're receiving from god under grace it's it's, it's the other way around we're just simply receivers now we're receivers under grace of his goodness and his mercy and all the other things that he has for us so touching on the first feast passover that began when um, the people left egypt on 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 the day of passover and of course before passover could begin there had to be a lamb and the lamb had to be slain and then the blood was put upon the lintels of the the doors of the israelites and as uh, long as the blood was on the doors of their homes the death angel would pass over and uh, those who had no blood on the doorposts would be caught in a plague so that is history in our in our bible we can read about that and moses came to pharaoh and said let my people free let my people go and uh, after a lot of plagues eventually the last plague when the firstborn male child was killed uh, i think they gave up and then pharaoh said you know, just get leave leave go please and here take as much silver you can as much gold as you can and just leave us alone so they plundered egypt and left and that was um the passover well all these feasts have a timeline because god does everything by his timelines and everything is cyclical it just goes around and around what goes up comes down it cycles and so now we see that uh, we in the passover if we look at it now into the church age it's come and gone it began when they left egypt and it ended at the day of pentecost when the, oh, sorry, it ended when Jesus Christ was crucified, <laughs> and then we, they were transitioning then into the day of Pentecost, and so it began at a point in time and it ended in a point in time, uh, and so when Jesus died, that he was the Passover Lamb, the blood was shed, uh, and sin was dealt with, and then he rose from the dead, he presented himself alive to the disciples for 40 days, over 40 days. Many people saw him, witnessed to the fact that he rose from the dead. And then in front of their eyes, he left. And they all watched as he ascended up into heaven. They all had lifted up their eyes and saw him go. Then the Spirit said, as he left, he will be coming back. The second coming of the Lord. So these are incredible things that have taken place in our Bible. But I think it's even going to get better than that. You know, all the things that we think is impossible are going to be possible because we serve the God of the impossible. 
So we're going to see some things in the days to come that we've never seen before. So keep the vision high. Don't let it go. God's going to do some incredible things in the last days. And we will come into union with him, with his mind. And he will live in and through us, expressing himself through us. So anyway, Passover eventually went into Pentecost. The Feast of Pentecost typifies um, the Pentecostal life, spirit-filled life, where Passover was typified of a, of a redemption by the blood of Jesus. So Pentecost, the promise of the Father was that the Spirit would fall. So Jesus said to him, go, just wait there in Jerusalem, don't do anything until the promise of the Father comes, where the Spirit will turn up. And sure enough, on the 50th day, um, the Spirit fell with great mighty roar and sounds were fearful i should imagine and the tongues of fire were upon the heads of the apostles the disciples i mean these are amazing impossible things to see happen and of course at that day in jerusalem there were jews from all over the planet and those who were who were in, in the jewish faith but weren't jewish by by a, a, the original Jew, but they were Jews. And they all met at the feast day and brought their offerings. That was Pentecost. But again, the Lamb came and also the Spirit came. The Spirit came, the Holy Spirit, and they were Spirit-filled and they began to speak with other tongues. Great mighty signs and wonders happened. And from that moment, the the world was turned upside down the holy spirit moving amongst the people the jewish people the gentiles now that were in that fig tree they were grafted in and it was jew and gentiles and it was amazing times but again it has a timeline now the timeline that i i study is from a guy called i think i told you before stephen e jones uh, Dr. Stephen E. Jones, he has a book called The Secrets of Time. And I, I look at that and I research it. And um, he's just one of these guys that has the ability to do things mathematical. <laughs> That's not my style. Um, but I study it and I think, my God, everything, everything is so uniquely planned by God. You know, I mean, it's, sometimes it's down to the day, the same day. Well, on the day of Pentecost, 40 jubilees later from the start of Pentecost, 40 jubilees later on the day of Pentecost, May the 30th, 1993, the timeline of the Pentecostal movement came to an end. So the Passover timeline has come to an end. Pentecostal timeline has come to an end. And we're transitioning now into the last feast. And that's the one that I like to focus on. I mean, thank God for Passover. That's where we get our, our salvation, Jesus, our Savior. And praise God for Pentecost, where we get Christ, the anointed one, and signs and wonders. I mean, just incredible good stuff. The, bad, the, the sad thing, though, is that not everyone took advantage of the Holy Spirit. There's many Christian organizations, denominations, that are not into being uh, spirit-filled, praying in tongues. They don't believe all that. That's a shame because that's the down payment or the first fruits of what God has in the future. So if you're not partaking of the first fruits by faith and praying in the Spirit, you, know, ask, you just got to ask God. I've laid hands on many as a pastor in the, in the 17 years of pastoring. I've laid hands on hundreds of people and seen them filled with the Holy Ghost. And it's a joyful time. It's a time, in fact, it's a time of being joyful. The time of Pentecost, a time to be rejoicing before the Lord. 
and the spirit fell and they were rejoicing and they were speaking in other tongues it was the, the personal language and then there's the sign and wonder language uh, which is slightly different but it's still supernatural you're partaking of of the supernatural the powers of the world to come and so i know most of you who are on board you're all spirit filled you pray with tongues but a lot of people don't still they don't um and it really i think is because they haven't maybe been taught or they're not in a in a situation where they're hearing the the fruit of all this and what they can enjoy which is a shame but if you're not filled with the holy ghost just ask you don't have to clean yourself up and you know fast and pray no, no just ask and if you ask god for uh something good he's not going to give you something evil if you ask god for the holy spirit he's not going to give you an evil one people are a bit nervous about that in the beginning but after a while you realize that the spirit in you is holy and it's a wonderful thing and it's uh, it empowers a, a person and you're praying to god directly you're bypassing your mind and you're praying for your heart your spirit to god things that need to be said so that's the sad part about pentecost that not everyone partook of it not everyone saw it as being valuable uh, to pray in the spirit but i just pray in the spirit i really don't pray much in the in the in the intellect I'm praying the spirit because I'm praying the perfect prayer unto God. You're praying the perfect prayer. I don't really have to understand what I'm saying. I know the words are coming forth. But again, there's the gift not only of praying in tongues, but the gift of interpreting the tongues. And many times I've interpreted my own prayer language and also the, the prayer of someone else who's praying in tongues. These are just gifts of the spirit. Pentecost was all about gifts of the spirit going out and doing and uh, signs and wonders casting out devils etc these signs shall follow those that believe they shall speak with new tongues you know they shall cast out devils if they drink any deadly poison it won't harm them it's all supernatural god's a supernatural god anyway that was just the down payment it's the down payment the first fruits once one timeline comes to an end the other begins we're transitioning now we're actually in tabernacles the feast of tabernacles and that speaks of fullness it's the in gathering the feast of tabernacles at the end of the year in the old covenant the types was that they were going to gather all the fruit the oil and the figs and the pomegranates etc and it was a time of celebration and then of course it was a time of rest tabernacles is about rest fullness um, harvest prosperity it's a wonderful dispensation that you and i have found ourselves in and it's a thousand years it's a thousand years sabbatical rest of our souls uh, but mighty amazing things are going to be happening during this time. So we're in it. We're in it. So it'd be good to know what it entails. Well, we're going to know that during this time, the second coming is going to take place. The day of the law is going to take place. There's going to be some amazing things, things that we've never seen before taking place. So we've got to prepare ourselves for this time just like we had to be prepared for pentecostal the pentecostal times we had to be prepared for that it's come to an end may the 30th 1993 on the day of pentecost it was a sunday now about that time in fact i don't know if it could have been that day i'm not, I'm not sure i wish it was i wish i could remember the day when i was on in victory church preaching the first service and the spirit of god just hit me i went to the floor 
And then I praying in Holy Ghost, I was groaning in the spirit, and I heard these words, I'm releasing you to the new world. Well, that was in 1993, the end of 1993. I didn't know about the timelines like I know now, as I'm explaining it now. I didn't know it then. All I know is I heard the Spirit tell me that is releasing me to the new world. When I got up from the floor, I went, I just went and sat down. I mean, I was in the middle of the service giving a sermon, but I couldn't carry on. I just sat down. And Denise said to me, my wife, Denise, what did God say to you? I said, well, he said that we're, he's releasing to the new world. He said, I said, I think we must be going back to America. I don't forget, I've been, I married Denise in America. She's American. Uh, she's the missionary. She's been over now many, many years. Uh, but at that time, she was a missionary for quite a few years. And now I thought to myself that maybe God's taking me back now to America, so I'm the missionary, and that he's going to do something else with us. Well, you know, God always meets you on the level of your understanding. I really didn't understand what the new world was. Um, I'm understanding it now. I believe the new world is this dispensation that we're in called tabernacles. It's new. Now, when you move into the new, you've got to let go of the old. There's no use expecting God, because we know that certain things are going to happen. Don't expect the next great revival is going to be a Pentecostal one. It won't be. Don't look back to Pentecost and the, uh, that feast. It's over. It's now a thousand years of tabernacles, the fullness. So we know about the down payment, the first fruits. But now we've got to get the fullness. <laughs> you don't want to just have the down payment. You want you want the full thing, okay? That's coming in this time, the fullness, the fullness of the spirit, the fullness of the fruits, the fullness where we are one with Him, at one meant with Him, atonement. We are walking with God. We're hearing Him speak, and we're fellowshipping with Him, and and no men are putting this together. It's not about men having meetings and trying to get us all to sing on the same hymn sheet. It's not that at all. This is a divine thing. This is a God thing. We'll flow together. We'll agree together that God is good and his mercy endureth forever. And God is well, is raising up. He's, he's already raising up an army. Elect in this army of those that are looking to him and are ceasing from their own works. They're wanting, they want, they want more of God. These are the overcomers. And this is a, a, a group of believers that will operate in this dispensation of tabernacles with full power, full wisdom, full anointing. Christ the anointed one is in them. They know it. And this is what we've got to look forward to. So we we mustn't lower the vision. Remember the vision, Habakkuk 2.2. It's for the end days. Keep that vision high. Because we all know that God is about to turn up on the scene. We know that. At the end of the age. We're at the end of the ages now. This is the end. It's coming into fruition. At any time, we could be caught up. So keep looking up. Your redemption, my redemption, is very nigh. And if you're not walking with God, this would be a good time to take stock of your foolishness. You've got to be walking with God. You've got to be talking with God. This is not a time to uh, not be <laughs> in Him. And, and uh, this is not the time to, to have no oil in your lamp. This is the time to be serious about what's taking place. You can see what's going on in the world. It's, it's unprecedented. The whole world is being shaken. And we know in a few days' time, if you don't know, in a few days' time, the election in America is, is going to be insurgency as soon as Trump comes in, and he will. But the, the opposition... They're going to go crazy. It's not a good time to be in America. It's going to go on for years. 
the Civil War. There's a battle going on. If you didn't know about it, I'm sure you did. But there's a battle. A battle. But God's in control. God's in control. He, he knows what he's doing. This is so amazing to me to know that even the timelines to the day this thing happens, to the day certain things happen, over thousands of years, God's in complete control. So you can be safe if you definitely got the blood on the lintels or the doorposts of your heart, you'll be safe from the plague. Plagues are coming. Wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes. It's all escalating. It's coming to a tipping point. We know that. The world knows that. Everybody knows. It. Some are fearful, some are in faith. I'd rather be in faith than to be in fear. But the media is putting fear on everybody. Everyone's fearful. You know, they don't want to go out their houses. They think if they don't wear masks, they're going to catch a plague. Not necessarily. It's a lot of it is is over the top, fear based. Uh, locking people down. That's not God's plan. This thing will pass. It will pass. Now you don't want to be silly. I mean, if you're going to go out and protest, Ephraim, you know, take your mask. <laughs> you're going in the streets. Uh, uh, but you can't go in fear. You've got to go in faith. Um, yeah, it's real. People are dying, but people have been dying since the beginning. Thousands die a day. But thousands are born a day. It's a cycle. just comes and goes. But stay in faith. Stay in faith. Believe God. No plague will come nigh your dwelling. State that. Plead that blood in the heavenlies, in the realm, boldly going to the throne room of God. Plead the blood of Jesus. You know, when the high priest, under the old covenant, on the Day of Atonement, because the Day of Atonement comes before the Feast of Tabernacles begins, the Day of Atonement, he goes in and there's your lamb. You've got to have a lamb. And the lamb is sacrificed and um, the blood is shed on the mercy seat for the cleansing of the high priest and the nation so the Jews they were cleansed on the day of atonement by the blood of Jesus Christ the perfect lamb and on the the, the garment of the high priest God told them that they have to put uh, pomegranates with yarn of purple and gold they they make these pomegranates and then uh, a, a bell of gold between each pomegranate around the the garment of the high priest so when he went in the little golden bells would tinkle but the pomegranates, now I'm telling you this because I had an experience with a pomegranate only two days ago. <laughs> I don't, we don't really buy pomegranates like that. We get them, we get them in waitress where you just eat the seeds. But this one pomegranate came with a bundle of other vegetables. We get every now and again, we get a case of, of um, vegetables and fruits. And there's a couple of pomegranates in there. Denise liked them for for the food look good on the table. But I came along the other day, I saw one, and I said, I better eat it, because I don't know he's going to go off. And it wasn't a very big one, it was a smallish pomegranate. But I did remember once watching on YouTube how, how to peel these things. But I, I didn't have time to remember what it was, and I didn't want to go on YouTube, I just wanted to eat it. So I got out a knife and I cut it. And when I cut it, it just shot blood, <laughs> red juice, went all over the wall. Everywhere. It was the bloodiest fruit I ever did see. And cutting this thing and it was red juice everywhere. And I said to myself, this pomegranate speaks of the blood of Jesus. This is what it is. It's the blood of Jesus. That's why it's on the hem of the high priest on his garment because it's, it's the blood. Now, a lot of people might say it's to do with sanctity or whatever.
But let me tell you, without the blood, there is no anything else. And so my pomegranate, I saw it there. I said, that's definitely a type of the blood of Jesus. And it was everywhere. And I said, I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat the blood. I'm going to put it away. I don't care where I put it all over me. Because Jesus said, if you've got to, you've got to eat my flesh, you've got to drink my blood. And if you don't, you'll have none of me, he said. So I was happy with my bloody pomegranate. Hard to eat, but eventually all the seeds were coming out. But the interesting thing is, I found out that there's 613 seeds in a pomegranate. Apparently that's, that's what they say. 613 seeds. Well, there's 613 laws in the Torah. 613 matches perfectly the old covenant the laws in the old covenant 613 613 seeds in the pomegranate i mean come on what sort of divine mind is involved in all this these types and shadows they all mean something and the blood of jesus speaks your redemption speaks my redemption and the blood wants to spurt over my kitchen walls praise god let it be in jesus name i want some of that blood because the blood is what sanctifies us the blood is what cleanses us and and it was shed one time at calvary by the lamb of god you got to have a lamb passover you need a lamb pentecost you need a lamb the high priest has to sacrifice on the Day of Atonement a lamb before the feast is announced. These are all wonderful things, types and shadows, but the reality is we're in it. I believe we're in a thousand years of very exciting times. If you're looking for it, if you're looking up, looking for Jesus, because he's coming. But there's going to be a people called the overcomers. They're going to be God's elect. He's preparing you and me for this time. He's preparing us. We're being prepared for this. We won't be fighting God or striving with God or saying, why God? Why me, God? No, no, you'll be in agreement with God. And as you're in agreement with God, you're walking with God, you're talking what God talks. He's having, you can have a conversation with him because he understands that you understand. That this vision kept very high, that the end times will bring about what he's always had in mind. God always had in mind that his son, Jesus Christ, will be in the creature as the creature's life. And that he will write his laws, uh, 613 of them from the old covenant, across our heart and put them in our mind. He will do it. He will do it. And so the, 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 the Feast of uh, Tabernacles is, is uh, uh, in, the, in, the, the, in the time of the church age now. It's grace. It's all grace. You say by grace through faith, none of yourself. It's a gift of God. We're just receivers of God's gifts, God's fullness. Fullness. In the fullness of time, his fullness must come about. He promised it. There at Pentecost, Jesus said the, the promise of the Father is going to come. He promised the Holy Spirit. And it came on the right on time. Well, the fullness, he's promised us the fullness. That's going to come as well, right on time. We're moving into it. Now, it seems like you have a crisis before you move into something new. You can look at your own personal life. Usually out of a crisis comes the new thing, the new good thing. Well, the world's coming into a crisis. You know, right now in America, it's a major crisis. In a few days, the 3rd of November, they're going to have an election, and I believe Trump's going to win it. And the uh, Democrats are going to go ballistic, and they're going to raise up an insurgency. I believe it's going to be civil war. It's going to be horrible. People are going to die. It's going to be bad. It's crisis. But out of that crisis, I believe will come the days that we have been expecting. 
days of great peace and prosperity. And, um, but it comes through a crisis. Uh, and, uh, and, and God's judgments are real, and they're coming. It's unprecedented. Never seen anything like this. But keep looking up. Your redemption draweth nigh. The fullness, the fullness of all that he has promised us. It's possible now. It's possible. Because this speaks of a jubilee time, a time of rest, a sabbatical rest of our souls. Jubilee is where everything is restored to us. All the things that were taken from us are being restored. I mean, uh, it's amazing what is going on when you, you you watch the news. Now, mainstream news, of course, is very difficult to get a true perspective. But there's other news channels you can go to, usually online things, where you can you can get a reality of what's really taking place. But um, it's 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 shocking. <laughs> what's going to happen is shocking. Get ready for it. You've got to be prepared for a big crisis before we come into the smoothness of the way. But don't faint. If anything, just practice talking about the blood. Yeah, and when you go into the heavenlies, into the throne room of God, boldly enter in by the blood of Jesus and plead that blood in the, in the, in the heavenly realms. The courts in heaven, just as real as the courts here on the earth. More real. Anyway, judgment begins in the church, but judgment's coming upon the earth. So you don't want to be caught asleep. So this is why we've got to wake up. Wake thou that sleepeth, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light and life and goodness and mercy and truth will follow you all the days of your life. So anyway, this is not a measured time. It's, it's the, the measurements are taken off. Pentecost, it was in, you were given the down payment in measure. Tabernacles, it's all. Of his fullness we have all received and grace upon grace. God's not holding back anything. Nothing. And that's why the whole earth is groaning, waiting for the sons and daughters of God to be manifested. This is that remnant that God has been preparing. Manifest sons of God, operating in the fullness of the Spirit. We haven't seen anything like this. The fullness of the Spirit. I mean, Pentecost, in the beginning, that was just a down payment, and they turned the world upside down. But in the fullness... I believe that this restoration of the earth will take place. Well, exciting times. That's all I can say. Exciting times. And I am uh, uh, I know that the end of the world, the Bible says, or Jesus said that the end of the world is the harvest. So this is harvest time. Tabernacles, harvest. When the ingathering, they they we're told to go in the streets and 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 just uh, sit still in little booths that they would build, a little booth out of out of trees. It gives you a sense of temporary dwellings because God wants you to see that this is just a temporary. This is not your real home, home the way it is now. It's a temporary thing. Though he's always moving us. I don't know about you, but I've moved so many times. God never lets me settle in one place for too long. But he's going to settle us in this time. Now we're going to be settled. After you've suffered a while, he said, he'll, he'll, he'll strengthen you. He'll perfect you. Establish you. Then he said, I'll settle you. This is the time we'll be settled in him. It's in Christ. Union with him. You have not so learned Christ, Paul said to the people. 
We've got to learn Christ. Well, we know that Jesus is our Savior, but Christ is the anointed one, the anoints. Uh, Christ is where the anointing is. The anointing abides in you, is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The anointing that breaks every yoke is in the life of the believer. That special group that being raised up, I suppose you could call them the Joshua generation generation because we're crossing the jordan into the promised land the promised land for us is that god is going to keep his promise it's not us telling god that we're going to keep his promise he said i i'm i promise you i'll keep my promises god's going to promise he's promised us the fullness will come it's going to happen the day of the lord's coming the second coming is coming <laughs> it's going to be glorious uh, the promise of God is immortality. This is not a simple little thing, a little blessing here. This is immortality. He promised those that believe in his son, Jesus Christ, will never die. If you do die, we raise you up. The last day will be raised up. Immortality. Come on, you're going to live a thousand years on this earth with a body looking like Jesus' body. Won't get sick. It'll always be forever young. And then you move into another realm of eternity we don't even know about. So you get all that just for believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. All these amazing, supernatural, abundant things are yours in Christ just by simply believing in your heart, listening to the gospel message preached, and believe in your heart that it's true that Jesus died for you and rose from the dead for you. And then you confess him with your mouth, believe with your heart, confess him with your mouth. All this is yours. I mean, what a deal. What a deal. And yet people reject it. They, they laugh at it. Well, they ain't seen nothing yet. Because when these anointed ones come on the scene, they'll be preaching and teaching. Uh, under under an anointing, uh, the Christ in you, hope of glory anointing, people are going to come to the Lord in masses and that the whole earth is going to bow their knee and the glory of the Lord will cover the whole earth in these end days. We're going to see revivals like we've never seen. It's all going to happen, but it seems like first will come the suffering, the crisis to bring us in into this new world. Well, anyway, I'm going to end with that thought that there is a group of people that God is raising up. And uh, you might want to put your hand up and say, uh, Lord, I'm, I'm ready for the divine fullness, the glory of the Lord. And I'd, I'd like it to rest on me too. I'd like to be in your choosing who's going to be in. It's in the Bible. The manifested sons of God are coming. The whole earth is groaning. People are groaning. Maybe you're groaning. Something inside is not, you just groan. Oh, God, there's got to be something better than this. There is. There is. Keep looking up. Cast not away your confidence. Has great recompense of reward. And if you're backslidden, if you've fallen away, this is the time to get right with God. You know, are you a prodigal? Have you ended up in the pig pen? Well, good thing about prodigals is that they've got a father that loves you. Just take one foot out of the pig pen and, and say, I want to go back to my father's house. As soon as God sees that one foot coming over, he is already walking towards you with a garment, a fresh, clean garment and a ring for your finger. You might have backslid. Many have, but it's not the end. You can get back in by faith, believe in God trusting God, repenting of your sins and your stupidity. Repentance is a way of escape, is a repentance. I've learned that. Thank God for repentance. It's a way of escape to get you back on track with God, walking with God. I love to, even the th just hearing walking with God. You no, know, Enoch walked with God and was not, and God took him. Just hearing it is sweet to my ears. I think, oh, I want to walk with God. Talk with God. Have a mind that understands his mind. How exciting is that? In agreement with God. He said, I've not always strive with man. He said that. 
He'll have a, he'll have a people that will agree with him and walk in his ways. Anyway, this is not about you going out buying a pomegranate, but if you do, <laughs> you go you two first and find out how to take that skin off because it's a messy job. But you know what? When Jesus died on the cross, it was a messy job. Man, they put nails in his hands and nails in his feet. They ripped his back apart, put a crown of thorns on his head. It was bloody. It was blood was all over the place. But that was God's blood being shed for you and for me and for the sins of the world. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. We have with us a lovely man, Ephraim, who's going to end this time with his saxophone. <laughs> I love you so 
and you love me. Yeah.